Well, glory be to God. Another great day, great opportunity, great time to share the word of God with you. And I'm forever grateful to God for you. And I thank God for your willingness, faithfulness, and obedience to his word. Today, I'd like to encourage you from the book of John chapter number 15 and verses 16. John 15 and 16, and it says this. If you, uh, you know, it says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. So here Jesus was talking to his disciples again, and he began to tell them that you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. In other words, we accepted the choosing of Jesus. When we came to him, it was as a result of us responding to the call that he has already given to us. So he's saying, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Now, Jesus did not only choose us, but he also appointed us. You know, so many times, whenever there are games that are being played in school or any kind of sport that are being played, whether they are professional, people always want to be part of those teams. But you have to be chosen. You have to do tryouts in order for you to be chosen. But here with Jesus, we don't have to do any tryouts for him to choose us. It is as a, desi as a desire of his own will. He desires to choose us. He desires to call us. We don't have to qualify in any way. He qualifies all of us. Therefore, he chose us. We did not choose him. And then he appointed us or he already ordained us. In other words, when he chose you, he already set something in you for you to be able to perform. Just like someone who will be chosen in a game, they are given a position to play. Jesus also chose us and then placed us with a purpose on earth to be able to do something. Then he goes on to say this. And I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Now we were appointed to be able to go and bear fruit. Not just bear fruit, but go and bear fruit. In other words, him choosing us and him appointing us already put us in motion. We are not supposed to be stagnant believers. We are supposed to be motion believers. In other words, we should be on the move as believers. So Jesus is saying, I chose you and I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Go where? Go into all the world and make disciples. In other words, everywhere you go, bear fruits of the kingdom of God. Plant the seed of the word of God and let the seed fall into good ground that God may be able to bring Bring forth a harvest from the seed that you are sowing. And therefore Jesus is saying that you may go forth and bear much fruits. And whatever, uh, you, that you may bear fruits and that your fruits should remain. So in other words, as you are going, you should look for longevity, not for temporarily. So you are going out because you've been chosen and appointed. And whatever you are doing, the gospel that you are pre uh, presenting to people... The discipleship that you're making should remain. In other words, your end result is this life ought to be transformed. This community ought to be transformed. This family ought to be transformed. It is not just to be seen, but it is both to be seen and to be heard. And therefore, your fruit should remain that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. In other words, God, uh, God wants to give you everything he has, but Jesus is saying, I am the agency that the Father will give you everything that he has if you will stay with the appointment, having chosen you, and if you go according to my command, then if you do so, then whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will always give it to you. Why his name? Because Jesus paid the penalty of sin as a result of us being reconciled back to God. Before the downfall of man, we did not need Jesus. We were right with God. We did not need Jesus until in the garden of chapter 3 of Genesis, when man was deceived, and that, that particular time, then we did not have direct access to God. We were separated from God spiritually. And as a result of that, we could never be able to approach God without the blood. That's why there was always a blood sacrifice that had to be offered so that we can be able to be appeased in our minds to be able to fellowship with God. So Jesus came, he shed his blood once and for all. Now we ask anything in his name and it shall be done unto us. Therefore, I'd like to encourage you today. Ask the Father anything in the name of Jesus. As you continue to work out the appointment he has given to you, and as that fruit continues to remain, the Father will honor the name of Jesus. Stay blessed and have a wonderful day.